I would like to talk about Church's encoding of Booleans. Alonzo Church is the father of lambda calculus. So he was the one who created the lambda calculus, the formalism behind functional programming. And um, Church's encoding, you can think of it, basically Church decided to show that um, if you have lambdas, just lambdas and variables, so no numbers, no booleans, you can still represent all the other data structures. For instance, you can represent booleans, you can represent numbers, which are infinite, um, and you can represent lists and so on. Church's encoding is, uh, by encoding is like, how do you represent, let's say a Boolean as uh, just lambdas. And what we're seeing here is lambdas with a single parameter, a single argument, okay? Um, so this, Sounds weird, right? How would you, how would that even be possible? Um, so here's there. There's a few more links in the in the slide. So if you click follow it, you'll find, for instance, Colin Kemp's uh, PhD thesis, which has even more examples. And the idea is that you can use these examples um, to test your interpreter, right? You will write uh, lambda s and lambda e, two versions of the of the same algorithm and it should be able to reproduce or uh, execute the terms that um, Alonzo Church created. So I have them in this slide and what I'm going to do now is kind of go through it uh, very slightly, although that's not the main focus of the, of, the, um, of the course, but let me go through it nonetheless. So the idea is that you can represent um, a boolean and let's start with true and false with a function, a curried function that takes two arguments, right? So this is curried, therefore you take, you have a lambda that returns a lambda that eventually returns an argument, right? And what we do is true represents, is the function that returns the first parameter and false is the one that returns the second parameter, okay? So pretty simple. So you have lambda A, lambda B, you return A. And lambda A, lambda B, you return B, okay? That is true and that is false. Uh, one way to to uh, run a church boolean is by you evaluate it and you pass true in the first parameter and false as the first the second parameter and whatever you return will be either true or false right because if a is true and you return true then that would be equivalent to returning true so if that was a bit confusing let me show you this example so if I run bool, right? So if I call lambda, let me copy paste it. You may notice that what I've wrote here is actually uh, a quoted term, right? So if I call this and I pass 2a true, right? And then if I pass 2b false, I should obtain because it's going to return A, I should obtain true, right? So let's see if that's the case. I indeed got true, right? So I can even confirm the correctness of this specification. I can do check true. And now the test will confirm that for me automatically, right? Okay, so if I run this again, no output, thing worked. So now I can do the same thing. Okay, so false is the term that returns the second parameter, right? So in this case, I would expect it to return false. So let's see, let's check if this is false. Okay, and I got false, right? So now what we can do is we could take, we could use a special racket function that just takes a quoted term and evaluates it. And this would be a great way to implement homework four Although if you do this, you get zero points, as you might imagine. So Racket can evaluate any any expression if you give it a quoted term, right? So if I want the code associated, you know, to do the parsing and evaluation of it, you can just call eval. You have to do this magic before and so on, and you cannot do, use this in your homework. But you can use it in your test to make sure that your homework assignment is correct. 
So what I'm doing here now is I'm evaluating the Boolean, right? So if I evaluate this lambda, I get the lambda. Uh, and then I'm passing true and false like I did in these two examples, right? So now run bool will just return the Boolean, will evaluate and pass true and false, and then check if you got either true or false, right? To make sure that the thing is working. So now I could even define, so I can go ahead and I can do check bool, right? And what check bool does is, oh. so if I take uh, define check bool, right? That takes a quoted Boolean and what it does, it, it does return bool, oh, and then the expected value, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I wanna call check equal, right? And on the left hand side, I'm gonna write the Boolean. And then on the right hand side, I'm gonna write the expected. Okay, so this is just a shorter version of, uh, of what I have below, right? So now I could do check bool and I can write true and I can write true. So I get this test working, right? And just so you believe me, if I write false, I should get an error, see? I got true, but I was expecting false. So everything is working as expected. So I can now replace this. I can do check false. Check bool, I can pass false, and I can do false. Okay, I can remove this code now. Okay, so what is or? Or is interesting. Let me remove this just so it's a bit. Or is the function where I pass through to it, right? I have two booleans and I pass through to it and, and the return value of it, I pass to, I pass B. So it's kind of confusing. So what I'm gonna do is, um, the importance here, Basically, what I don't want to really go into a lot of detail as to how and why this works, because that's kind of besides the point of the course. What I think is important is, is just look at these as um, complicated examples of how to use functions. Uh, what these examples will exercise is they will exercise the um, the environments and the substitutions in really intricate cases. Because as you can see, we are passing functions around and passing as parameters functions and then returning those functions and passing parameters that are other functions and eventually you get values. But now what I would like you to show to show you is that if I do, just I wanna sh show you that this indeed works. So if I do check bool and I pass or, and I do true, false, I should get, um, True, right? I mean, I can even write it. True, false. And I could do the four cases, right? I could do true, 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 false. And then true, right? So here I'm expecting true, 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 false, and then false, false, and then false, true. Thirty-five. Oh, maybe I I miss, I did something wrong. Oh, yeah, this is definitely wrong. A undefined. What did I do here? Oh. I see what I did now. Hmm. I see what I did now. Okay, so you will ignore this for a moment, which is known as quasi quoting. Or is it with a. I think it's with this. So I'm going to copy paste this. I'm gonna revert all the changes I did. Or rather, 
I'll just copy paste this. Okay. Yeah, disregard the changes I did. Okay. Line 30. Ah, yes. Okay. And now, where did I have a mistake? Line 9. Ah. Stupid error. So if you're if you have errors that do not help you, you can always write error trace and it will give you a bit more information. So in this case I know that it comes from nowhere. Okay, this is stupid. Because the the thing that is happening is check bull is it's not giving me the stack trace that includes um the call to check bull for some reason. So I think is it like this? There's some way to define See. Uh -huh. Yeah, so instead of writing define, if you write define check, this is like a magic that makes it so that record... This is related to the testing infrastructure. So if you add define check instead of a define, it kind of fixes the, the, the line number problem. Okay, so the bug is here in line 27. Uh, and it's saying that I did not... What did I not do? Uh, so false and true. Of course yep it was different than what i had in the code okay so this is correct and the rest of them are also correct so but this is just to show you that this will actually build really complicated terms so let me finally the last few minutes i want to use is just to print out what you get so first let me show you the term that you get if you do or and then you do true false so see what happens what this does, it builds like this huge lambda term, okay? And this is going to be running by your interpreter. So I think what I think is interesting is really to to use those terms as as fodder for your um, for your tests, All right? So check this one out. So I can copy this. Now I paste it here. This is a more interesting example. And this is what I'm using. Oh, parentheses, of course. This is what I'm using in the in your homework assignments to make sure. Yeah, look at this beauty. And this beauty right here, it means true equals or of and false true true. Right? And this whole expression evaluates either it is true or false. So if you run this and you pass it true and false, it will return. Um try to run bull. I don't even know if this passes or not. I mean, not passes, if this is true or false, this is true. Okay, so there you go. I just wanted to show you that you have, um, you know, you can use these um, and or not eq, eq and or as things that build these terms and you can copy paste those and try to parse them and then um, check if your evaluation works. Um, or alternatively, you can ignore it, <laughs> do whatever you want. This is, I think this is a good source of more tests basically. Uh, and it's interesting. It, it tells us some, there's an important lesson here as well, which is to say that uh, actually, you know, the fact that you have numbers and booleans and all that, those can all be represented just by using lambdas and variables alone. You don't need numbers. You don't need, like theoretically, of course, for performance reasons, you actually definitely 100% need it. But if you just want to show that one is as expressive as, as the other, yeah, lambdas, they can, just lambdas and variables is all that you need to, to be able to write any, any program that you have. It might just be really, really slow. That's the problem. Okay, I hope you had a good one. And have fun. <laughs>